As 2009 began, the United States inaugurated their first ever African American president, and although there was plenty of news from around the world, we brought you the people, places, and events that affected our little town of Cherubusco, Indiana. The year seemed to start off on the wrong foot when a local woman lost her home to a fire in early January. Later that month, the community pulled together to help Tara Green and her husband Andy raise funds for a heart transplant she so desperately needs. A semi disintegrated on US 33 near 750 East, causing traffic problems for morning commuters. And Schroyer's Variety Store on North Main was sporting a new look, but still kept the famous candy counter. Jordan Hamilton was crowned regional wrestling champ at Carroll High School. Senior Tiffany Lefevre was recognized at the January school board meeting in the spotlight on success. And several students brought home gold and silver awards at the Indiana State School Music Association District Competition. And longtime florist Linda Ryling was and still is a big hit after opening a second watering can florist shop in Columbia City. A little after 5 p.m. on a Sunday evening, people's lives were turned upside down, literally, when a tornado struck the Countryside Mobile Home Park just outside of Columbia City. Julie McCoy Sabatino was featured in a story claiming the illnesses her and her son are developing are the result of the home they bought that was allegedly used to manufacture methamphetamine. The Cherbusco Smith Township Fire Department took possession of a brand new rescue truck, replacing a 30-year-old piece of equipment. J.R. Ford returned to the business world after opening the Do It Best Eagle Lumber and Hardware Store south of town. His wife, Marcia Bercy Ford, also opened her own office in the new building for her consulting business. In April, many local residents were honored for their dedication to the area community, and the men's track team dominated the Busco Invitational. CNA expanded their operations after purchasing the Mali building, which was formerly Dana, the men's track team finished 10-2 and 9-1 and and in the conference, earning the team a regular season conference championship for the first time in school history. Midway through the month, emotions ran high as parents voiced concerns about bullying at Smith Green schools. Over 20 comments were received during the week, keeping Busco voice editors busy monitoring the debates. Emmanuel Geiger was honored at Old Settlers Day as the oldest settler and longest community resident. Two local teenagers lost their lives after losing control of their vehicle on 550 East, north of State Road 205. Police say 16-year-old Megan Young and 17-year-old Andrew Spencer were southbound on 550 East when they apparently lost control of the vehicle, crossing the center line, and then overcorrected and flipped into a ditch filled with water on the west side of the road. When Thelma Leach was born on July 4, 1909, zippers, bras, and crossword puzzles had yet to be invented. William Howard Taft had been inaugurated into office four months earlier as the nation's 27th president. Some days, she said, I feel 100. Other days, I don't. Cherbusco Youth League officials hosted the end-of-the-season award ceremony and carnival in August, drawing hundreds of men, women, and children to the Cherbusco Community Park. The fire department responded to a boat fire, an injured man on the roof of the library, a house fire, and a tree that just decided to fall for no reason at all. The annual Cherbusco Chamber of Commerce picnic in the park was almost a no-go. But the rain was brief and the sun came out and everyone shook off the raindrops and stayed for good times, food, and fellowship at the Cherubusco Community Park. September was all about the community giving back to those in need. Cherubusco Chamber of Commerce members dressed in bright purple tie-dyed t-shirts and went to work around town working on landscaping, painting, cleaning, shoveling dirt and sand at businesses and residents in need for the annual United Way Day of Caring. Nearly 200 people gathered at the Whitley County YMCA for a walk in memory of Rebecca Hollenball and in support of Dwayne Lowe. Hollenball died of stomach cancer in August. Fog is possibly to blame for two crashes that occurred near Blue Lake, one involving a school bus full of children on their way to school. The Busco doubles duo team of Ryan May and Alex McDowell claimed the first ever tennis sectionals title and ended their season at regionals with an astonishing 20-1 record. Cherubusco won a dramatic come-from-behind victory over Lakeland to force a three-way tie for the NECC championship in football. In what has become the most controversial, commented, and visited story of all time was the ACLU story suing the Smith Green Community Schools for disciplinary actions placed on two female athletes. Longtime resident and local businessman Jim Horn, owner of Parker Insurance Agency, was given the honor of Business of the Year at the Cherubusco Chamber of Commerce Banquet at the end of November. 
Firefighters Tad Shively and Ben Rinker were given awards at the fire department's annual elections and banquet. Shively was given a heroism award for saving the life of a woman from a burning mobile home in January, and Ben Rinker won Firefighter of the Year for his dedication to the department and community. Busco Voice has had the great pleasure of covering some of the finest people, places, and events in and around this community and wish you and yours the very best in the upcoming new year.